Hey guys, I am looking to create some new content on this channel that is heavily centered around teaching folks how to count out loud using various classical music examples. And so I would like to make this casual video to seek your feedback if you are a pianist studying at pretty much any level or if you're a teacher as to how to make this content the most effective. So I noticed that there are many different piano tutorials for various pieces all over the internet and there are uh, some examples of slow practice, which is great. There are some examples of practice with the metronome, which is great. But there seems to be a lack of videos and tutorials showing people how to actually count various pieces. And this seems to be a sticking point in a lot of people's training. And when I learned this skill, it like completely changed my life and it changed the kind of student that I was and it dramatically increased my output and it made me a much better sight reader. So I sort of want to share that a little bit and just provide some motivation uh, through examples of how to count various classical works. So I would love to seek your feedback on that if you want to leave some comments below. So I have two ideas. The first idea is that I would create a five to 10 minute video where I would focus on one particular piece and I would, I would sort of jump around the piece and show you how to count that. So uh, I'm actually going to give you an example of that now. I have Debussy's Arabesque One pulled up, which is a piece I often see played without regard to some sort of pulse. And by the way, I'm not meaning like a metronomic pulse. I mean a pulse as a, a sense of organization, like an organizing principle across the piece. You have your pulse and then you have the music that's organized around the pulse. So it's really obvious when someone plays without that organizing principle. So that's what I'm looking to help folks establish. So on a piece like this, the first thing I would show you is basically how to count the triplet, how I count the triplet. I like to say one olet, two olet, three olet, four olet and I use the words O and the word let, right? And that can actually be spoken really quickly, which is really helpful, and I do not use the word and, and there's a reason for that, which I'm going to get into in just a second. So if we counted the beginning of this piece, it would sound like this. One O let, two O let, three O let, four O let, one O let, two O let, three O let, four O let, one O let, two O let, three O let, four O let, one O let, two O let, three O let, four O let, one O let, two O let, three O let, four O let, okay? Now what do we do? Because we have this two against three polyrhythm. Well, it just so happens that two against three polyrhythms are really simple to count if you use the system where you say one O let, two O let, three O let, because when you're counting the two, like the eighth notes, right, on this left hand here, and by the way, I'm talking about this measure, you're gonna say one and two and three and four and, right? I'm sure you guys are familiar with that, but you might not know how to do that while a um, division of three is happening at the same time. So basically what happens is you get these syllables, three, O oh, let, four, O oh, let, by the way, this is just a little sample of the content. This isn't actually going to be what it's, like what it is. I'll make another video actually covering this piece in a little bit more detail. I'm just zooming through it right now. But anyway, so you get something like this, and what you're gonna do is you're going to actually line this and up and between the O and the let, right? And of course the numbers all come together. You're gonna line those up and you're gonna say that, and you're gonna do that for the first uh, pulse of two as well. So one O and let, two O and let, That's how you would do a polyrhythm like this. And you would square it with the beginning of the piece by ultimately backing off to the quarter. So I would go one O oh, and let, two O oh, and let, three O oh, and let, four O oh, and let, one O oh, and let, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And then I go back to the beginning of the piece. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. And then I could jump to that part. One, It's easier, the faster you go, the easier it is. But when you go really slow and you count that polyrhythm out, that lets you map everything out like at a really slow tempo, which is super, super helpful. And of course, I could jump to the middle section of this piece, which would look like this. We would go one, oh, and let two, three,
That's just a little example, okay? So that's my WC example. And if I really made this video, I would use more um, examples of counting across the piece so that when a person has watched it, they would pretty much know how to count everything and how to tie it all together at some point, hopefully, using a unified pulse, which is what we want. All right, the other kind of content that I might make would be probably in the form of a short. And so I actually have never made a short before. I don't really know how that works. I'm going to keep track of the analytics to see if this is something that's fruitful because obviously this is not gonna be a helpful thing if nobody sees it and YouTube doesn't distribute it. So uh, I'll try to make these video shorts where I'm just practicing slowly and counting. That's it. No other spoken dialogue or anything. It's not a tutorial. It's meant to motivate a student and it's meant to, like if the piece is too hard but I'm showing you how to count it, it shows you how close you might be if you just count, right? And if a student is working on that piece or they are, maybe they would be willing to work on that piece, this can sort of introduce it to them and also show them how to count it. And I would usually only be a section of a piece. So it might be like the B section of Fur Elise or um, you know, some other piece. So in this case, I have a piece called Homeward pulled up, which is by Grieg coming from his lyric pieces. This is a piece that I would like to actually seriously learn at some point, but I actually don't need to know how to play it perfectly in order to show somebody how to count it. That's the beauty of one of these things. And that's what makes this content really sustainable because I am a really, really, really busy person and I teach a lot of folks and I don't necessarily always master every, every single piece I teach. But that's one of the things that you will deal with as a teacher. You'll teach a wide variety of repertoire and you don't necessarily have to maintain it, which is great. Uh, you just need to show how to learn it. So in this case, I would do something like this. So the video would start here. One and two. Something along those lines, of course, like clean and you know not messy or anything. So uh, these things are really, really important to me. This is how I teach when I am dealing with students that are not particularly accustomed to counting. Like the first thing I wanna do is show them how to count and show them how easy things are when you count. And to me, when you know how to count, uh, music feels incredibly satisfying even at a really, really slow tempo. You can make it beautiful at a really slow tempo. So this second kind of content where I'm just basically making a short and giving a little preview of something is would be designed to do that. So anyway, what do you guys think of these ideas? How can these be configured in such a way to respect your time the most, to be the easiest for me to create so that I can create a lot of them, and also to actually be like really helpful for you in getting you to count, okay? That's what I'm interested in hearing about. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you enjoy this idea and I will see you in the next video.